All right, hi, you're 11. This is Mr. Lim here again, and this is our second video on chemical bonding about the properties of substances, okay? So we're gonna learn what properties we can use to differentiate between things and uh, the required characteristics that they have. All right, so what is this all about? So remember, we are the atoms are trying to get a stable electron configuration, which means they're full p orbitals in their en outermost energy level. Um, so the idea is that they uh, want to achieve this. And so how do they achieve this is uh, chemical bonding, right? So they achieve this uh, stable electron configuration um, and then their uh, atoms are arranged in a particular way. So how they exist at the atomic level, once they have achieved achieve the stable electron configurations, determines how they exist at the macroscopic level, which means that uh, their microscopic uh, arrangement affects their macroscopic, which is like the visible properties that they have. So effectively, how their atoms are arranged affects their properties, right? We use four properties uh, to understand how atoms are arranged in substances, right? We use their malleability, or also known as ductility. We use their electrical conductivity in solid form, right? We use their electrical conductivity in liquid aqueous form, or and we use their melting boiling point. All right, so these are the four properties where the, the four different types of chemical bondings will have different combinations of these, and so therefore we can use them to differentiate them and understand them and uh, broadly classify them into those four categories of um, substances. All right, so let's have a look at the first one. Um, oh, why have I doubled up slides? That's a bit odd. All right, so let's have a look at the first one. Uh, malleability. So malleability is the ability to change shape and st and stay in that shape without breaking okay so effectively you can bend something and it stays in that uh, new shape ductility is the ability to be pulled into long strings or ie wires without breaking okay so it's effectively being able to change its shape um, without breaking now if you think about what happens when you change shape is that the atoms are moved all right so um the and so once the atoms are moved, okay, because we're talking about atoms being moved, they need to still be held together. So effectively, it says the two properties rely on the ability uh, of the attraction that holds the atoms together to be uh, constantly present, which means they don't break even when the atoms are moved. So effectively, whatever's holding them all together, um, even if those atoms move, that still has to be held together. Uh, those forces need to hold them together, otherwise uh, it'll break and therefore not be malleable. All right, this is called non-directional bonding. So you can also just say that something has non-directional bonding. That's what it means. All right, so the opposite of malleable is called brittle, and it's when a substance breaks when force is applied uh, due to the attraction force that holds the atoms together. That attraction force breaks, and so therefore they're not being held together, and therefore it um, breaks. All right, so that's malleability. Electrical conductivity. Okay, so electrical conductivity is dependent on the presence of mobile, which means they can move, charge, which means they're positive or negative, particles of some sort. All right, so mobile charge particles are needed to conduct electricity because effectively all electricity is moving charged particles. All right, so some substances have mobile charged particles. Uh, in only some of various states, while some in all states. Okay, so effectively, you might have some substances which can conduct electricity in molten form, but not in solid form, right? Or they might have the ability to conduct electricity in both solid and liquid form, or even gaseous form, all right? So, you have to consider the conductivity in solid and aqueous or molten form, okay? So solid, that's fairly straightforward. Aqueous means that it's dissolved in water, Okay, and what does molten mean? It just means it's liquid or melted form. Okay, so the idea is that does it have mobile charge particles? If they do, it will conduct electricity. If it doesn't, they won't conduct electricity, and we have to consider it in the different um, states. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Finally, it's the melting boiling point. Okay, so the process of changing states is the breaking of the bonds that hold together the atoms. Okay, so those are the same bonds that hold together the atom. Um, and hopefully they hold together the atoms in all directions if you uh, move the atoms. 
like to make it malleability. But effectively, if you want to break those bonds, that's you need to give it energy, and that's effectively melting or boiling that substance. All right. So the stronger the bond is, the more energy is required to break the bonds. Okay. So effectively, if you've got strong bonds, you need a lot of energy to break them, i.e. you need a high melting boiling point. Uh, or if you have a not a lot of energy needed to break them, then uh, it's a low melting boiling point. So the melting boiling point is effectively a measure of a way of the energy required to break the bonds between the particles and so therefore uh, tells you something about the bond strength. Okay, so that's it for the four properties, right? Uh, the electrical conductivity was split into, was combined into one, but you need to remember these points because we'll be discussing all of the types of bonding within these contexts. All right, so that's it. Adios.